okay so good evening all of you welcome to all of you my name is himanshu and uh, what is the purpose of it i should not tell we already know the purpose is to discuss economic survey and uh, the approach which i have adopted is rr approach so rr means simply relevance and replication approach relevance from upsc point of view not reading anything whatever is given in survey and replication from exam point of view be it prelims or mains but here in this class since this is in august so we will be dealing with only information relevant from answer writing point of view is it clear when the next survey will come in when will it come january 31st or something like before budget then we will deal with prelims point of view okay so any inconvenience everything is fine everyone at the back is it visible okay thank you so purpose we discussed that relevance and replication approach and mains point of view so why this class uh, how, uh, before that how many of you are writing mains this time 1 2 3 no you frankly tell me because accordingly i will devise the strategy 4 anybody else 5 6 7 8 9 10 Okay, almost ten people are there who are writing mains this year. Okay, if their your number would have been more, I would have taken a different strategy. But still, I will take care of you, of you, you guys. So, because I ask if you are writing mains this year, then I should be focusing only on points and I should be skipping the things, right? But now also I will take care because everybody has to be taken care, right? Okay, so. Uh, mains people or anyone why especially mains people i wanted to ask why we are keeping this class at this point of time because you might be thinking that this is last moment and we one hardly one month is left and uh, we should focus more on revision any idea what i feel from personal experience that whenever i have written mains the absorption the absorption capacity of our mind increases when as soon as the exam approaches right or wrong right and one one more assumption i am keeping that making that by this time you would have finished your static you would have finished your current affairs so this is simply icing on the cake where you will take the value addition things the pie chart the flow charts the diagrams the data which you can use as a value addition material for your answer writing okay so due to that i have we have kept this class at this particular point of time and it will be very easy to remember and you will go and replicate it in your exam so since very less number of people who are writing means this year but still those who are writing next year or those who have written how many of you have written earlier means okay no problem but people are aspiring to write means is it right correct so when you are right aspiring so first question should come why to study economic survey give me one or two points or just we have to read because it is important document of government we have to read from that point of view or why should we read sorry anybody please be louder be confident no problem uh, to know about the range okay okay fine okay very good okay so this you guys are telling what economic survey represents i am asking why we should read from exam perspective okay so let's see i will tell two, uh, four five points if you analyze the syllabus of gs3 gs3 is mostly economy industry infrastructure and such things so what i have analyzed that 80 to 90 marks or approx 100 marks directly or indirectly you can link from economic survey and you can use the data you can use the idea you can use the analysis in temporal uh, on temporal lines sectoral lines sector i means primary sector secondary sector tertiary sector when we talk about secondary sector so let's say secondary sector is there in that infrastructure is there industries are there what is the ratio or what is the as you told uh, contribution of msmes what is the contribution of other industries how infrastructure is performing so such things directly or indirectly approx 180 uh, to 90 marks in gs3 not only that in gs3 now come to essay how many of you have written mains last year 18 no problem 
there was one topic i vaguely remember it it was poverty any essay topic poverty anywhere is injustice or injustice to prosperity everywhere there was a topic like that hello there was a topic like that okay so how when you will write this poverty anywhere is injustice or uh, what is topic i think threat threat to prosperity everywhere so when we are talking about threat and anywhere we have to link the uh, scenario or we have linked to the analysis at global level when we will talk about poverty what dimensions we will talk we will talk about its social dimension we will talk about its economic dimension right why it is affecting how it is uh, what is the status when we will read survey or any data we will read the oxfam report what is the status of wealthy people what is the status of poor people what should be the as you told what should be the scenario what would should be the projection of the economy to for inclusive growth and development so such essay topics there was one topic on digital economy as well 16 or somewhere there are there are directly topics from uh, economy gdp related things so there we can use all these information so my point of telling all these things is that whenever you are reading any information don't think that only gs3 think from sa point of view for example in this chapter sorry this year's survey there is a second chapter we will discuss today itself the chapter talks about behavioral economics and there they have uh, discussed about nudging concept of nudging they have discussed about how to bring uh, behavioral changes and all so that you can directly use in gs4 right ethics how to bring behavioral changes attitude component of attitude there are three components of attitude right so one component is behavior so they, they have dedicated one chapter to it then gs2 gs3 gs2 they have discussed one chapter related to judicial reforms governance reforms so that again we can use not only that i have found this year's survey very applicable and very suitable for optionals those who are having anthropology optional they have one topic application of mythology is it there religion okay so they have discussed the concept how to apply mythology to bring behavioral changes one chapter dedicated to demography again there in anthropology and as well as in geography optional demography is there as a chapter as a topic so there we can use i am telling you all these things when we will discuss further you will be open to receive the things okay so don't think that i am wasting time just we will discuss how to use where to use for pabat people there is one chapter dedicated on mg narega there is analysis of swachh bharat uh, abhiyan one dedicated chapter itself is there so those things can be asked in optionals as well so my point of view of telling these things is that coverage or read or receive the things from holistic point of view not only don't restrict yourself only from gs3 point of view is it clear okay so this is it and uh, my approach i told you so what i have done i have devised this approach rr approach which is relevance and replication approach so relevance and replication approach i have adopted while forming this synopsis or the summary of volume 1 and volume 2 so this survey this year survey has two volume and in total 21 chapters volume 1 has 11 volume 2 has 10 chapters so rr approach is only relevance and replication whatever summary we, we get i have not read any summary from from past 5 years i have made my own notes and i have read so the point here is that i have not dumped every information from economic survey to my summary i have kept only those things which you can remember and you can replicate okay second thing you must have gone through the advertisement right the pamphlet digital pamphlet so there i have mentioned rd sheets right so rd sheet is very revision friendly thing so i have given it name rd sheet ready data sheet and ready diagram sheet so it looks like something yeah so this is rd sheet sorry you want this but i will be using board so again it will be problem right so this is rd sheet i am giving a picture i have compiled the data in ready format for your revision so that i have faced this problem i have been making this rd sheet for myself and my friends from last 2 3 years so what i have done let's say demography i have compiled all the data working age population this 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 share of india's young this this shelter of elderly share slowing population growth growth so what is total fertility rate what are the 
proper data I have compiled at one place. So like this I have compiled the data of volume 1 and volume 2 at one place for revision. So this is one addition thing which you will be getting only in the last because then only you will be able to comprehend that whatever we have read and how to revise it. If I will give you an starting you won't, it won't make sense right. So this is RD sheet 1 means ready data sheet. So this is second RD sheet which the name I have given is again one ready diagram sheet. So what I have done here chapter wise wherever it is relevant not deliberately I am taking out the diagrams and making it only from the relevant topics and relevant chapters I have gathered the data and all the flowchart diagram wherever it is possible because sometimes it happens that whenever I was also writing my mains sometimes I was not able to visualize what does value addition means what does graph means. So let us say uh, there is data of forex reserve forex reserve in 1516 was 360 billion in 1819 it has it has become 413 billion so there is increase so these diagrams we should use in our answer writing rather than writing directly one data use such graph to write it to represent it this will add value addition it hardly takes place a space on your answer sheet this is uh, since i have to represent it so i have drawn like this otherwise if this is answer sheet you can hardly take this space and show it right okay this is the uh, projection this is the data where it is increasing or decreasing whatever right you need not to mug up those data just remember 15 16 18 19 so this is again one rd sheet value addition again I, this i will be giving in the end so that it will make sense is it clear so i will show you so it looks like something already i have shown it looks like something okay so rd sheet is this again the same same image it looks like something okay so these are value addition things i'm i'm showing you the, because then you need to realize the importance that whole class you have to be attentive to receive those things when you are revising on your own those things won't be discussed that is only for your revision so when you are revising how will it make sense to you only when you will be attentive in the class so by the end of the class what i am expecting is that what whatever i have told is that what i would be giving i will be discussing the con concepts i will be providing summary sheets i will be pro providing uh, rd sheets but by the end of this class whenever you go home internalize the data internalize the information discuss with your friends and try to use them then only it will be useful otherwise this feel good factor will be there okay we have done the class and we have every information in our hand or as a material but you won't be able to replicate it that's i know very well okay so how to replicate it internalization think how to write there was data on feminization of agriculture last year economic survey so you should think how to write when to write where to write okay so think it internalize it take previous year question papers and think how and where to use discuss with your friends so this is i'm telling what you have to do after the class okay so let's start with the <coughs> economic survey and uh, this is the cover page so you must be thinking that why i have put cover page here any significance any idea mm -hmm. so you have read economic survey at least few pages starting right <laughs> okay no issues she is right and why is the blue color she told blue sky is thinking approach so we'll see this year's color is blue blue sky thinking we'll discuss what it is previous year the color was pink any ideas very good very good so you have been following it right so blue sky thinking approach and please try not to distract me by talking or doing anything okay so hope you won't mind but if you will talk i will be distracted why what happened so just a gentle request don't mind it so blue sky thinking approach so what survey is th saying that blue sky thinking what does blue sky represent what does blue sky represent unlimited, unlimited one aspect okay one prelims question tell me the rain bearing clouds okay what is the color of the cloud dark gloomy black and such things light cannot even pass it another question why absorption this that of prelims related so blue sky represents clear sky clear approach clarity it represents clarity so when we talk about blue sky thinking 
when blue sky is blue you can think far you can think clear right so what survey is saying that till now the economy or the planning or whatever aspect till till now india or in any specifically india we deal the economic economic uh, sectors in silos in uh, separately we discuss or we take them separately what they are saying that was classical approach today you need not to think that everything should be in equilibrium what this year survey is presenting that things can be in disequilibrium you have to maintain the complementary interlinkages complementary interlinkage of investment complement complementary interlinkage of data exports and whatever ideas they have given so for that certain targets they have kept and for to achieve those targets we need complementary interlinkages of different sectors different areas of the economy to achieve those targets and for that we need blue sky thinking so blue sky thinking is basically bringing up some new ideas if you are not uh, i think everybody would be aware of this uh, out of box approach we right in our answers right we should think out of box from now on change the out of box to a okay be louder so rather than writing in answer that okay we should give some out box of out of box idea rather write as economic survey said we should go for blue sky thinking approach so a small value addition it will change the orientation of your answer right so this was blue sky thinking and complementary interlinkage and we discussed the cover page and when we are discussing cover page last year you can quote it was pink it shows it highlights that government is sensitive towards the vulnerable section it is reflected through such a small nudging and such a small presentation that they think they care about women of course they have to there is gender budgeting and other concepts yeah so there are two volumes volume one is talking about all blue sky thinking so basically they have presented 11 chapters in those 11 chapters they are talking about such new ideas such blue sky thinking approach such ideas which can help in uh, help our economy to achieve those targets second they have given whatever let's say whatever uh, ideas they have presented in those ideas to prove those ideas they have given evidences okay this idea this is being implemented in usa this is being implemented in canada so evidence based analysis they have provided for such ideas and also how it will help it will help in informed policy making so uh, they have given these two words are important you have to write in your answers that whenever government when you are writing that government should solve this problem mention that evidence based analysis of the problem should be done first thing second informed policy making informed decision making whenever you are writing gs answer or especially ethics answer in respect of decision making you should write informed decision making so these two keywords i have highlighted volume 2 again is talking about recent development in major sectors of the economy primary secondary tertiary industries infrastructure so what is the status what is the data what no 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 problem everybody please put your phone on silent so that you will be not disturbed okay so what are you saying recent development in major sectors what is what is the statistics specifically this this is talking about this year the year which financial year which has gone what was the development what has happened what was the data then they are saying what is the existing status and challenges of course it won't give the comprehensive picture of all the sectors so don't have that notion if they have spoken or they have mentioned about tourism they are talking only about four five areas of tourism they have not given all the uh, services of the tourism okay so this is of volume 2 yeah okay by the time he calls will yeah it is so the chapter 1 itself there are uh, 11 chapters the chapter 1 is talking about shifting gears private investment as a key driver so the argument which is being made here is that private investment should be a key driver okay we'll see how when for what purposes so the flow of the chapter would be something like there they have kept certain targets we'll discuss about that target to achieve that target we need okay just one more announcement i need to make just make running notes okay for your understanding don't write everything because anyways i will be providing the summary i am not providing it now because you will be busy with the summary right so don't worry about notes making note down the key points for your understanding don't uh, try to make comprehensive notes 
I will be giving notes of each and everything. So don't worry, just focus on the concepts. So they have kept a target and to achieve that target, they will, uh, what we will move, we will see that to achieve that target, what we should analyze the macroeconomic stability of the country. Then we will see how, what model or what should be done with respect to achieving this target. In that one component is that private investment should be a key driver to achieve these targets and for such model of economic growth where we can achieve these targets and to achieve private investment or to get private investment or to achieve that economic growth we need blue sky thinking approach they have presented ideas at the end of this chapter. So first target is becoming USD 5 trillion economy by 24-25 this is the new agenda of the government and uh, of course of our country and second is USD 10 trillion economy by 2032. So this data you should remember and you should use now on from now on in your answers but before that we should understand what is the status of present what is the present status of our economy anyone any one person 2.8 2.6 2.7 you will get the variations in the data and uh, basically it is whatever you write approach 2.7 trillion economy we are at present with respect to GDP okay we are 2.6 or 2.7 or 2.8 trillion economy just mention approx okay when we are analyzing this then we should also know that what is the GDP of China sorry 12 very good USA 19 it is 19 so when we are targeting when we are comparing with those countries we should remember the data to achieve that target so just imagine China USA they are 12 billion 19 sorry 12 trillion 19 trillion where we are okay whatever that data you should know for the comparison any anything that data we should uh, remember for comparison next comes when we are aspiring for it one question comes why we are aspiring for uh, to become USD 5 trillion economy we are aspiring for because let's say if anybody anyone is working in company and I am getting 20,000 this month in this company why we switch we switch because because of our aspirations because of our goals because of the needs of our family member now apply the same thing at country level when we a country one country is aspiring why they are aspiring because of the problems of jobs unemployment inclusive development poverty to make for the balanced regional growth balanced regional development of every, of all the regions northeast or wherever it is so for inclusiveness for jobs for development all dimension whichever you can say which whichever you can recall with respect to problems of the economy you can mention we are aspiring to solve those problems that's why we want to grow at this economy okay now we have kept the target so before analyzing what model should be what uh, what should be the model of the economic growth we will analyze the macroeconomic stability of the country to understand that such variables should always be constable uh, should be stable in order to achieve these targets so this is <coughs> what uh, the question is what is the status of macroeconomic variables macroeconomic stability so when we are talking about macroeconomic variables macroeconomic then again here comes the basic concepts we are not going to discuss the basic concept if anybody has any problems or any doubt keep noting them down on separate sheet meet me after the class okay if any urgent or relevant issue is there we will discuss in the class macroeconomic macroeconomy deals with or is uh, re with respect to country level when we are talking about microeconomic microeconomy deals with individuals firms their decision making their behavior their decision making and other aspects so to understand the macro economy we have certain variables we will analyze the status of those variables with respect to growth rate inflation current account deficit forex reserves fiscal deficit okay so these are the five variables which you should remember whenever you are analyzing any question or any information of the economy with respect to government or policy making you remember these keywords and try to analyze them okay so let's do the analysis growth rate what is growth rate here we, are we will talk about the growth rate of the GDP okay there are many parameters to analyze the growth rate PPP is there GDP is there we will survey has presented GDP why and the technical concept why not GDP why PPP that is complete economic aspect so growth rate 
So when we are mentioning about growth rate, we should remember three data. What is India's growth rate? What was China's growth rate? And how the world has been growing in these five years? So let's see the growth rate. India has been growing at 7.5%. This is the growth rate of GDP and of India and world in 2019 as per the data of IMF, World Economic Outlook. So when you will compare, just draw India, China and world. World has been growing at 3.6% average. China has been going 6.9% and India 7.5%. Now analyze the data. When we do the analysis of data, we find that when the whole world, including China, part of world, so when the world, world's growth is on declining trend, India is on increasing trend. So this analysis present two ideas in front of us. That of course, when the world is not growing, GDP is not growing, our exports will be affected first. We are losing our market in the traditional economy like uh, USA, Europe and all. Second, it provides the opportunity that okay, since China is also on declining trend, we can bridge or we can fill the areas where China or the other economies are vacating the place, India can go and play the role there. They can fill the market there. So since we are growing, we can play that role. Okay. So these three data and one more thing just from answer writing point of view, whenever you are presenting, I have deliberately made this from my hand because when you read or when you see the data from economic survey, colored photograph and all, you think that you can't approach it or you can't write it. Simple, you can write it. Just draw two axes, world India China and draw these things. These are the value addition. Whenever topper or anybody talks about value addition, these are the value addition. And after drawing it, just box it and give a name to the figure. Name is important. Okay. So this was just for writing, writing point of view. So this was growth rate. Simple, three data, representation, and we'll do the analysis. That what has been, what is, uh, what is the status and what, what, what is, what has been happening in last five years. So growth rate has been stable and it is increasing while the world says is on declining trend. Inflation. When we talk about inflation, what is inflation? General price rise with respect to one base year, we analyze whether our economy is at inflated cost or what is the status, right? So inflation at present, RBI has taken CPI, WPI, CPI, we know the difference. Anybody need that clearance? We will not discuss, okay? So inflation, the status of inflation survey is saying that it has been in manageable limits and whatever the inflation was in this five years, it was just half of the inflation what was there inflation in the previous five years. Means 14 to 19, inflation was half of the inflation of previous 9 to 14. Okay, so that is their analysis. So they have not given any figure. Okay, just to mention food inflation was within the limits of 2%. So you can use this data. Current account deficit, we know current account deficit is part of Current account is part of balance of payment, balance of payment, capital account, current account. In current account, we talk about imports, exports, remittances. Uh, should I write? Yes or no? Be louder. So this is balance of payment. We know current account and capital account. So what is part of current account? Import, export, with respect to this, it will be trade balance, then services, then remittances, then here FDI, FII, external commercial borrowings, then NRI deposits and other things. There are many components. We will analyze these things in current account, capital account. So when we have deficit of these things, why we have deficit? Because our imports are more than exports, right? We are dependent on oil, 80% of our oil needs are, we are importing. So when we are dependent on your import, what is the status of remittances? We are, we are highest remittance receiver. We have crossed even China. So we'll see the data and all everything around 70 billion. It is around 70 billion. <laughs> so it is negative. Overall, it is coming negative. So this deficit we finance through whatever money we are getting from outside. So we have current account deficit. Current account deficit is not good because we are living, our economy is running on debt. We are borrowing money and we are living on debt. So this is not good. But what survey is saying, government has been able to manage this and the current account has been in 18, 17, 18, it was 2.1%, approx 2%. In 18, 19, it was approx 2%. 
before the previous year it was somewhere 1.7 percent so though it has increased last year but it is within manageable limits as per the government okay so this is current account deficit within manageable limits no problem for a forex reserves prelims we have read what are the components of forex gold other things we know gold rtp reserve transposition yeah we have read okay so forex reserves forex reserve again we will analyze forex reserve we will see that the forex reserve have been on growing trend so this is pib data itself i have kept it deliberately to show the authenticity so here you need not to mug up all the data what you should do you should simply make a graph one x axis one y axis you have to take the data of 15 and 16 you have to take the data of 18 and 19 and what you should do what is the uh, forex in 15 16 360 billion don't remember 0.2 and all these things just 360 billion and what is usd us dollar usd 360 billion what is the status in 18 and 19 412 just show one graph higher than the 360 you need not to present exactly okay graph has to be like okay every point should be very correct so you show a little bit higher 412 billion usd and after drawing this you have to show you have to tell the examiner that this is on increasing trend is it clear so these are the value additions so usually when we will see this diagram what we will think okay good increasing but we won't think of replicating it so that's what we have to learn we have to replicate it so this was with respect to forex we are growing very good and who man manages rbi manages it very good and the status is good position is good now we will see okay so forex we did fiscal deficit fiscal deficit revenue revenue generation of the government is less than what the expenditure government is doing okay so fiscal deficit it is good for the country but within manageable limits so what survey is saying that it is it has been in manageable limits and it has been on declining trend due to our frbm act now recently there was amendment and criticism going on so there can be one question again like year on year frbm act came and every year every government is amending it they are expanding the limit or they are playing with the limit so what is the applicability of that but still that is another dimension we are not discussing that here we are discussing that fiscal deficit was on declining trend and due to the efforts of frbm we are generating new resources new sources uh, of revenue and all so here also we will see the data this is fiscal deficit here also what you have to do this is 3.4 percent in 18 and 19 and in 15 and 16 it is 3.9 percent so simple diagram 3.9 and 3.4 give the name of the year this is 15 16 here 18 19 and show the declining trend here you will write percentage of gdp here here you will write year so this way you have to draw the graph i'm just showing again and again so that you imbibe it you should be in a position to replicate it so i can simply tell that this is the data and you know and how uh, use it but you have to deliberately tell your brain train yourself to present like this so fiscal deficit has been in manageable limits and it is on declining trend when we talk about prelims then a question will come consistently or not so 3.5 that is prelims analysis so we saw the macroeconomic variables their status data what was the status so overall the macroeconomic variables have been in the manageable limits and they are stable so due to their stability now we are aspiring to become the 5 trillion economy or whenever we want to aspire for the stability and economy we need to remember or we need to quote these data now when we have discussed this we should now discuss okay good we are stable then what should be the model of the economic growth which we are aspiring that is usd 5 trillion economy so what should be the ingredients of those models same things are there in notes so don't worry about writing it again and again summary everything is there so what are the ingredients to generate such growth which growth usd 5 trillion economy and so previously whatever growth we have or whatever parameters we have discussed based on that the analysis says that india has been sixth largest economy last year very recently i think 10 days back or one week back we have become seventh we have, france has taken over so but according to survey we are sixth you can mention for sixth or seventh no problem so we were sixth largest economy in, on, in terms of gdp on in terms of ppp we are 
third largest yeah so that is one thing so to maintain or to achieve the growth rate uh, uh, of uh, this usd 5 trillion the growth rate should be at 8% then the economy will become the third largest and the inflation should be in 4% four, 4 limit so survey is saying that macro macroeconomic growth has been stable fine but what should be the future projection future projection the growth rate should be approximately 8% and the inflation should be within the manageable limit of 4% why 4% monetary policy committee its role itself is to manage the inflation within the plus minus 4 plus 4% plus minus 2 so that is required and when we will become that then the economy will be third largest economy is it clear so now to achieve that target what should be the model of the growth the model should be driven by virtuous cycle of saving investment investment especially the private investment should be the key driver then your jobs exports and favorable demography so what is virtuous cycle virtuous cycle means something favorable something good okay so virtuous cycle is let's say high income this is our starting point when high income people more people are working in an economy they are generating more income when they are generating more income demand will be more okay there are more people they will every month they will buy four shirts okay otherwise if economy is poor income is poor we manage with one shirt for the whole year itself so high income high demand will be there when high demand is there then the producer of the shirt or any goods they will mo invest more in the factor of productions so th when they are investing more they will invest at two places at revenue expenditures and capital expenditure why private invest private players or anybody should focus on capital investment because that expands the fa factor of productions and they are they give something if you increase the capital investment basically means your technology tools machineries such kind of things infrastructure these are your capital investment revenue expenditure giving salary and all those such things so high capital formation will be there means the economy of a scale will grow the uh, production capacity will grow and in turn there will be high growth again high growth will give more jobs more employment right so in turn high income okay so this is virtuous cycle favorable things are favorable for, from the economic point of view when we are discussing virtuous cycle we should also remember the vicious cycle i'm sorry for the inconvenience yeah so vicious cycle low income low demand affecting low causing low investment low investment means low capital formation low productivity so this virtuous cycle and vicious cycle not only in economic terms you can use in vicious cycle of poverty vicious cycle of any problem you, we can discuss okay so after discussing this virtuous and vicious cycle now we will see the vicious cycle or virtuous cycle of the economic growth what should be the uh, components of it the component should be saving when we talk about saving what has been the india saving rate sorry anybody india saving rate have been highest at the peak in 2007 and 8 sorry 08 it was 38% approx 38% and in 18 and 19 or let's say 17 and 18 it has been 30% 30.5 or something so this is on declining trend last year survey economic survey they presented one dedicated one chapter itself on the uh, saving and investment what should be the nature of the saving how what should be the nature of the investment and all okay so this is the status of saving this is the status of saving of india it has been on declining trend and uh, somehow it is picking up but it is not favorable but when we analyze china's saving and investment they its saving and investment is around 45% just imagine when we have more saving then only what we do with our savings we deposit in our banks banks will give to some some who uh, corporate or who so where is borrowing they will invest in the economy so this way our money or the saving is being circulated right so that is the role of saving so it is said that if you have saving pre precautionary savings are there which we keep for our future and all so savings are important with that respect and this is the status of saving so saving should increase investment private investment should be the key driver here again when we are talking about private investment private investment has been growing this was saving 
it was 35, 36% and in 17 and 18 it has been 26%. These are approx values. It is okay to write approx. You need not to mug up the point decimal things and such things. So it was 35 or 36%. It has declined to 26% in 17 and 18. Again, when you have to compare it, you compare with it with China that they are they have the saving and investment of 45%. Okay. So now come the question: private investment should be the key driver. Okay. Why private investment should be the key driver? Private players, what they do? They do a lot of things. They bring new technology. For example, Amazon or any any firm, e-commerce firm or anybody, they can invest very easily in artificial intelligence. But when government have to invest in artificial intelligence, what they will do? First, they will form committee. Committee will come. They will analyze. They will submit the report. Government will change. So process you all know. What I mean to say, to bring technology, new technology for government is not easy. They have to deliberately think upon it and they have to take a decision. But for a firm, it is very easy to take a decision which, uh, which technology, technology to bring. So they can experiment with the new technology. They bring new jobs. They generate basically new jobs. Let's say uh, government for now, I have not heard that government is hiring data analyst or data scientist. Have you heard? But firms like Infosys, firms like Amazon, they are hiring data analyst. So there is a scope for new jobs new domains so the hiring will be more okay capital investment again they will bring the capital investment with respect to factor of production of infrastructure industries they will bring technologies they will do all kind of capital investment which will increase their productivity okay so they will uh, they do this creative destruction what dismantling the long standing practice in order to bring innovation so they bring creative destruction destruction which is good for the society or economy so whatever long practice is uh, uh, whatever practice was there since long they dismantle it and they bring some new innovation for the economy and the society so other than they create capacity basically they derive new demand let's say apple apple came to india was anywhere uh, uh, was anywhere any any one of you aware about that okay we should buy macbook or we should buy apple iphone i6 i7 they created the demand right so they generate demand they derive the demand they create the capacity other than this you can write they generate demand so whatever new things are there or they are How? For bad guys would be knowing. They do the management very minutely with respect to technology. They There is proper time. They use biometrics. Okay, when you are coming, when you are going. But in government, what happens? Okay, you come, sign, go. Now it is also changing. So that should not be the notion. But what they do? They increase the labor productivity. So, new jobs and all. If you remember, you if you recall your virtuous cycle, when you are giving new jobs, new people, more people are employed, they are generating more income. When more income, they will go for more saving. When more saving, more investment, more investment, more capital formation, more capital formation, more productivity, higher will be the growth. So everything is interlinked, right? So private investment is linked this way with the virtuous cycle. So there can be one full-fledged question because they have been asking very uh, minute questions and very direct question. What uh, could be the role of private investment in the economic growth? So just remember and think from that point of view. Yeah. So we discussed private investment jobs. When we talk about jobs, the one thought comes that jobs should be labor intensive or it should be capital intensive. Because if we think that, okay, if uh, we bring more capital, more technology will come and more people will be replaced from the job. No, it is not such thing. China has experimented this and they have kept the optimal balance of capital as well as labor intensive. So they both has to be complementary. When a new technology comes, what they do? They bring new skills. They demand more skills. Different kind of skill set is required. So when different kind of skill set is required, so more jobs will be created yeah but of different nature so it is not that okay the classical economy or the 
uh, uh, critics they say that no if you bring uh, capital labor will be labor will be gone so that is not the same scenario what we have to keep in mind is optimal balance of labor intensive versus capital intensive uh, uh, should be taken care okay so that is about jobs okay next is export export when we talk about export so export three things we have to remember one data is there that our export is 331 billion in 2018 and as percentage share of the world it is hardly 1.7 percent we are 1.7 percent of the total export of the world and in services we are approx 3 percent so this is the status just imagine about the scope china's economy is export driven economy our economy is consumption led economy when you we consume let's say i am producer you guys are consuming till what extent will you consume i need a different market i need some uh, i need to sell my product outside of this hall otherwise after some time there, there will be stagnancy so even though we are consumption led we are producing and consuming our own self for our own economy for our own people but what china is doing they are producing and they are exporting it to so to become that usd 5 trillion economy we need different market we need exports that is model of the one of the component of the model so we need different markets and that too we should experiment with the new market africa latin america southeast asia not with the europe and uh, usa and such traditional export market they are our traditional export market but due to protectionist policies due to trade war we are losing our market there right are these terms clear protectionist policies and all things okay so export and last year survey presented one very good idea one very good uh, data basically that our export indian export is egalitarian in nature means that top one percent of our export firms they hardly or they generate wealth or they uh, they contribute to the production 38 percent means top one percent of the firms are hardly uh, represent hardly 38 percent of the uh, production but in brazil top one percent they represent 72 percent of the production top one percent in usa they represent 55 percent of the production so our export is more egalitarian in nature so if we focus on export there is potential that we can create more jobs more employment more productivity and more inclusiveness okay so that is another dimension okay this is with respect to export and uh, with respect to export survey has said that uh, there was one committee they have recently submitted their report in 2019 surjit bhalla committee so surjit bhalla committee was there they have suggested few things it should be implemented to improve our uh, export so three four recommendations are there uh, maybe you can note it down i have not mentioned in summary so one is yeah please yeah egalitarian you have read that oxfam report one data is that that top one percent people are holding or they are having the wealth 58 percent or 60 i'm not uh, the telling the exact data or the whole top one percent people hold the 60 percent of wealth of the country right here what is the data top one percent of the firms they are contributing or they are uh, they are holding only 38 percent of the production but in uh, russia uh, sorry in brazil and in usa what is the data top one percent 72 percent of the production they are holding means there is domination of the top one percent in all the export here what is happening the top one percent are dominating only 38 percent so there is a scope it is egalitarian 78 percent of the export is being taken care by the small firms msmes and other players right so there is a scope that our msme small players they can grow it is more egalitarian basically that i am quoting from last year they have not presented it this year but yeah last year this was data in economic survey itself that you simply if you will write that our exports are more egalitarian in nature with that data it will make sense okay any any doubt okay so what we were discussing export we discussed sorry ha huh, surjit balla committee i'm sorry so surjit balla committee has tell, told that first you reduce your uh, tax on corporate tax corporate tax should be lowered why we know if the corporate tax will be lower there will be more place more room for the private players to invest then simplify the regulatory and tax framework for foreign investor so that can come they can come and invest in the economy third set up empowered investment promotion agency empowered investment promotion agency 
PIF. Simplifying regulatory and tax framework for foreign investors. Third, setting up empowered investment promotion agency. Fourth, abolish essential commodities act and a apmc act because what they do essential commodity act when you ask that okay this percentage of the commodity should be reserved for particular this thing that thing or for our consumption pds or whatever things so basically that is trapping the commodities for the essential usage but if they will be free they can easily export apmc they can easily export right any confusion so these are the four there are many recommendations i am just telling you four which you can remember corporate tax taxation reforms for fii empowered agency should be there empowered investment promotion agency they have to they should promote then remove this um, essential commodities at an apmc so basically the surjit bhalla committee was with respect to double the export what is at present our export dollar usd 331 billion they are saying this committee was that uh, to project that how to improve and to double our exports and basically we are aspiring that by 2025 we should become usd 1000 1000 billion export economy that means we should be exporting 1000 billion uh, dollar worth usd pro, uh, goods and services okay so now let's discuss uh, this favorable demography so though it is a component okay any confusion anyone Okay, so this is a, one of the component of the demographic, uh, this model, but treat it as an independent question. Question can be what can be the role of favorable demography in social and economic aspects of India? That can be a different aspect, okay, different question itself. That's why I will discuss it in a bit of elaborate. So don't imagine that, okay, it is component of it. We will write one or two points and we will move ahead. Favorable demography. What is the status of favorable demography in India? We are having demographic dividend. When we talk about demographic dividend, what does it mean? That working age population is more than the non-working population. Okay, and the demographic dividend India has been reaping since 2005. Okay, what survey is saying that till next next more two decades, upcoming decades, we can reap it. So again, there was Kaushik Basu. Kaushik Basu was chief economic advisor in 13 and 14. He presented economic survey then. Then he told that, okay, we should have or India should go for timely harvest of demographic dividend. I have been using in my answers like anything. So timely harvest of demographic dividend should be done with respect to India. Okay. So that is it. So India's demographic dividend will be available for next two decades and India's Average age, young age, uh, India is youngest nation, approx 29 years of age. We will be like that, okay. So, what can be the role of favorable demography with respect to economy, with respect to model uh, that we will see with respect to four or five things. First, we saw that it will be in favorable, favorable zone means that the working force will be available, more working force will be available to us till uh, next two decades. When we have more working force, what is what will happen? Let's say in your family, more people are earning, they will bring more money. You will expand, you will buy a new home, you will buy TV, you will buy a fridge, you will buy Audi, whatever your luxuries or whatever your desires are. So favorable economy, more working force population, at present it is approx 50%. It is exactly 50.5% in 2011 and it is expected that it will grow to 60% in 2041. So these data are important. Again, I have kept the data in the ready data sheet, RD sheet, but still I'm telling. So favorable demography, we are at present working uh, force is 50% and it is expected to rise to 60% by 2041. Okay. So when more people are working, means more income is there. When more income is there, more saving will be there. When more saving is there, more investment. Link it with the virtuous cycle, right? More investment, more capital formation, more growth, again more income. So that is one uh, one aspect that growth of labor force when there is more labor force then savings will change and then your investment will change one dimension second dimension is that it has been observed that in india and uh, in china and different story that they went for population control but in india the total fertility rate is declining is it true 
now everybody is going for one child or two child or maximum three but the uh, fertility rate is declining we are controlling our population now what people are thinking or what people are aspiring is that let's save more rather than investing on children as our saving for the retirement what was the earlier what was the norm that okay reproduce more so that there will be more children for uh, as a saving for our retirement right but here what is happening that okay save more for our retirement so that is second aspect third aspect is that survey has presented one composition effect okay leave it so composition effect saying that uh, 40 to 60 per, uh, in the age bracket of 40 to 60 years people go for more savings when you go for more savings what will happen you are thinking for your retirement but in turn you are helping the economy right the next is that when all such things happen and more favorable demography is there, composition effect is there, you are saving more. But all such things should be worth only when the wages are meaningful, wages are good, good wages are there. What will happen? When wages will be good, then only people will save it, right? If we are getting 100 rupees for a day, what we will save? But if I am getting 1000 rupees for a day and my need is of 200 rupees, then only I will go for saving. So when Productivity increases. This has been observed with respect to China and Southeast Asian countries. That productivity increased, demography was favorable in case of China and they delayed the fertility. Delayed fertility, favorable demography, it helped in increasing the per capita income. When per capita income increased, it helped in more savings, more investment and in turn the productivity of the economy increased. Is it clear? So that should be the role of the, in the virtuous cycle that should be the uh, components which should be driving the model okay so this is it that's why we need favorable favorable demography and uh, th what i told that th that can be a full fledged question so the, here we i have discussed demography with respect to economic point of view again you can analyze from social point of view and just think it can be a full fledged question so with this okay now model has been discussed, stability has been discussed. To achieve that model, to achieve that target, we need blue sky thinking approach. So survey in the upcoming chapter, the first chapter was private investment should be the key driver and the upcoming chapter, in the upcoming chapter, they have presented these new ideas, which should be the guiding source to achieve that model. Whatever we have discussed, to, for that model, we need such blue sky thinking approach, such new ideas. So they are basically the topic of the upcoming chapters. So the second chapter which will be coming is about behavioral economics. They are saying that use the principles of behavioral economics to reach that target, to reach that model. Then they are saying address the issue of dwarfism. Dwarfism they are basically talking about, again we will discuss more in the chapter, they are talking about the small scale industries, how they are affecting, how it is affecting the employment, productivity. Third is making data a public good. We all have heard this, data is a new oil, right? Everybody? Data is a new oil. So they are saying that data should be a public good. Now again one essay topic can be there. Data is a new oil. Analyze. Here in this chapter we will analyze that only. Why data should be made a public good. Capacity building. Second GS2. Capacity building of judiciary should be improved. So they have dedicated one chapter. Policy uncertainty. How it is affecting the economy and what we should do to boost the economy. To boost the investment. To how, what should be done to address the policy uncertainty. Next is future demographic projection. I have given you a hint of the favorable demography in this chapter, but one separate chapter is dedicated. Again, you can use in geography, anthropology and any, any particular optional. Then enabling the inclusive growth through affordable, reliable, sustainable energy. What is the status of energy in India and what because energy is what? Energy is a fuel, fuel to the economy. Next is use effective use of technology in welfare schemes. They have presented the case study what I was saying for Pabad guys they have presented the case study of MG Narega that how technology has helped MG Narega in becoming more efficient more transparent and more inclusive next is redesigning the minimum wage system for inclusive growth what what was the last point of the previous chapter of this chapter only that wages should be meaningful then only the demography a favorable demography will be good for the economy so they have dedicated one chapter so these new ideas have been suggested by the survey to achieve that model for the macroeconomic stability. So everything is linked. Okay, before that. So this is the end of the chapter. Any doubt? Just 
briefly go through your running notes or your mental map. 